A peptide is two or more amino acids that are connected by an amide bond, which is also called a peptide bond. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect two amino acids together to form a peptide. And I'm going to be using alanine and cytosine as my examples of the amino acids. So these amino acids are going to be bonding together, connecting together at the carboxylic acid group of one amino acid and the amine group or the amino group of the second amino acid. So this is going to be their point of connection. So I'm going to begin by drawing just this much of my first amino acid because I know this portion of this amino acid is not going to be affected. So I'm going to draw it down here, H3N plus CH. CH3. Now it's time for me to connect these two amino acids together. When I'm making the connection, I'm going to keep just the carbon-oxygen double bond of this amino acid that's on the left-hand side, like that. So just that portion of it um, stays together. And maybe what I'm going to do is just kind of highlight this portion of the amino acid so that you can see it kind of coming together. And now I'm ready to actually form the connection to the next amino acid. The next amino acid is going to connect at the nitrogen, so this much of the amino acid right there. The nitrogen is going to form that connection, and that nitrogen, which has three hydrogens on it, is going to keep one, only one, of its three hydrogens, so just one right there. And then we'll draw the rest of that amino acid, CH2SH and COO with a negative charge. This nitrogen no longer has a positive charge on it, and this carbon over here doesn't have uh, any kind of negative charge on it as well. So in this process, when these combine together, I'm just gonna kind of highlight this part as well so you can see them sort of connecting like that. In this process, we lose this oxygen atom from the first amino acid, and we lose two of the three hydrogen atoms from the second amino acid. One oxygen and two hydrogens gives us an H2O molecule. So every single time we connect two amino acids together, we also produce a water molecule from the leftover atoms that are lost in the connection. This point of connection between these two amino acids, this is the part that we call the amide bond. It is an amide, the amide functional group. It's also called a peptide bond. And this, what we've drawn here, is considered a peptide because it's two amino acids. As long as we have at least two amino acids, we can call it a peptide. Anytime we have a peptide, we always have on one end, usually the left-hand end, the way that we draw it, the left hand, um, one end has the nitrogen, the amino group, the NH3+, and this end of the molecule, the amino acid that's associated with this end of the molecule is referred to as the N-terminal, the N nitrogen end of the peptide. The other end of the amino acid has the um, a carboxylic acid group, the COO minus portion, and that end of the amino acid is referred to, or the uh, that end of the peptide is referred to as the C terminal. The end of the amino acid with the, or the end of the peptide with the carbon uh, oxygen double bond group. Last but not least, the peptide can be named based on the amino acids that are making up the peptide in order from N-terminal to C-terminal. So like I said, normally left to right as the way that it's drawn. And the way that we go about naming a peptide is by using either the three-letter abbreviations for the amino acid or the one-letter abbreviation for the amino acids that are making up the peptide. We write them in order from N-terminal to C-terminal. Let's start by just using the three-letter abbreviation. So if we're gonna use the three-letter abbreviations, we will write the two three-letter abbreviations back to back. Uh, we write them with the first letter capitalized and the other two letters are lowercase. And we separate each amino acid from each other with a dash. So again, we're writing the N-terminal amino acid on the left and we are working our way towards the C-terminal amino acid, which will be on the right. And if we're gonna use the single letter abbreviations for our amino acids, in that situation, we just jam all those letters together in a row. No dashes or anything like that. So for single letter abbreviations, there will be no dash in between each symbol. 
and for the three letter abbreviations we will have a dash in between each abbreviation regardless we're always writing these from the n terminal to the c terminal from left to right